Okay, hello everybody and welcome to Investing with IBD for December 11th, 2019. I'm your host, Arusha Paris, and with me today in the studio, returning back to the show, is Jim Ropel, hedge fund manager and longtime customer of IBD. Thanks for being here, Jim. Great to be here, Arusha. On today's podcast, we are going to talk about the current markets, the importance of being an optimist, and we will talk about three current stocks. So let's get into the current market. Right now, we are in confirmed uptrend. Four distribution days on the S&P, six on the NASDAQ. So they're starting to collect a little bit. But indices are near new highs, and the leading stocks are hanging in there, and more and more, it seems like, are setting up every day. Jim, what are your thoughts? Um, I'm probably, I'm very b bullish, I would say. Um, you know, everything I'm about to say, you have to take with, if we break the 50-day on a bunch of leading stocks, this is all, so don't get all bullish, but <laughs> the Russell just broke out of a long base, yep. and so that's going to add a lot of breadth to the market. Oddly, a lot of rails are making all-time highs. The consumer appears to be as strong as it has been in decades, and we've had this, on, it appears to be a very unusual a plethora of gap ups yeah and you have like uh, luck and coffee Q qrvo um, dexcom tesla splunk vrtx ftnt i mean there's an un it's not just a few there's a lot of yes. them yes yes and generally a lot of these stocks are fairly unknown and they, i believe in the cockroach theory a lot where you know like you're looking in a cheap apartment in college and you see one cockroach come out yeah well, there's probably 10 more under the cabinet right well great earnings reports in early stages, usually have multiple, and so I. That's interesting. I see all these gaps, so I, it's hard to be bearish. Plus, I think we're in the early stages of a secular bull market, but there's one thing that makes me exceedingly bullish. It's like the public has gone mad. I think they've redeemed, depending on what numbers you look at, but somewhere well in excess of two hundred billion dollars from equities, while equities are going to Mars. Right. So they're redeeming like it's 08, 09, like it's 2016, where actually the absolute dollars are greater than at any of the prior lows. And the market's at all time highs. Like, So how does that happen? You're, you're getting these outflows, right, from the equity markets and, and the markets continue to crawl up and, and, and keep climbing that wall of worry. I think the Fed has stepped, we've shrunk the share base down by nearly 50% in a couple decades. So all the, a lot of buybacks, right? Huge buybacks. and. You've got negative interest rates around the world, so the corporations can issue debt cheaply and buy their shares back. Yeah. But it's it's hard to overstate the significance of, well, what's going to happen when they do what they normally do and they come into the market? Like, we could go a great deal higher. I mean, I mean what's the most, what's the least likely thing to happen after you have a 30% up year? The least likely. That it keeps going up. Correct. Right. Except we've got the fuel on the sidelines. The yeah. public... The public is so wrong. In 03, the Fed, I'm sorry, the public had was dumping stock in billions, hundreds of billions, right near the bottom. After they'd, they'd lost, they'd lost, well, they continued to sell yeah. at the very lows of the market. And what did they do with the money? They went on the largest bond buying purchase in history. So the discount rate is around three quarters of one point. I think it rose. The Fed then raised rates 17 times to six and a quarter percent. So they get the average American gets destroyed in the stock market, 50 right. percent. They load up in bonds and then the bond market crushes them again. Right. And so let's look at what's going on right now. The stock market's at all time highs. The pub, we should just call them Johnny Wrongway. <laughs> I mean, it's it's sad. It's true, yeah. But but, if but this, it's emotions. They're, they're 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 being led by emotions, and they're, well, they're letting their emotions make their decisions. Well, really, in many what ways. what possible? Re why is the public so negative when everyone's working overtime? They're earning more money than they've ever had. Unemployment's at crazy fifty-year lows. Yeah. Yet everyone's running around. The media, I think, has played a part in this. I I don't For have sure. Yeah, the fear fear sells right for the media so the media is incentivized to do that but but i think the other thing is you had 2000 and then you had 2008 and and those are still in everyone's memories right where so that's all you think about the stock market so they're trying to avoid the next crash well, i'm not going to get caught in this time but that's what is so phenomenal we've lost a a a, a, a class a a generation of investors like yeah. uh i'm just telling you, you asked me what i think of the general market yeah 
based on the trend, the fact that the market has a bad day and then just levitates back up, the rails, the, these gap ups in these leading stocks is a very big deal. The early stages of secular bull, the money, the position of money in America, charging into bonds, selling stock. I don't think this unwinds for a long, long time. Uh, we'll have corrections. Right. And again, this could be the one time in a couple hundred years that the public gets it right, but right. I'm going to go with the odds. Right, right. Uh, so I'm bullish. And, and and there are a lot of bases. There are even more bases setting up now too, right? There, all the the cloud stocks are starting to come back. It seems like they're starting to build the right hand sides of bases. So you could have a whole new group of of the, the which were the previous leaders in in 2017 and and through a lot of 2018 and the beginning of 2019 too coming back and and they're still innovating they haven't stopped innovating they're definitely trying i mean if if the cloud stocks are getting really ragged like i think they scared everybody out in the end of the summer right and now they're starting to wear people out like today was a bad day with ayx getting crushed yesterday after a huge gap up but a real sign of a great bull market is when you have a lot of gap ups in leaders but then they get supported in other words they gap up and they stay up yes so Kind of like after a follow through day, if you have a couple big gaps, if they roll over, you're you're, you're the probably is not going to work. But they're being supported. Like every name I just rambled off, and I could I could name ten more. Uh, very bullish that they're being supported. And the cloud stocks are kind of making me nervous. Like they're starting to wear me out, and yeah. I am the most patient person ever. Well, the last time you were on the show, you you, you spoke about a, a few cloud stocks. Mm -hmm. uh, I think one of them was ServiceNow. Yes. And and so you were holding you were holding an eight percent position, and so why don't you give us uh, an update on on where you are? Did you get out of that stock? You're still holding that stock, riding through the base as it's it's building. It's starting to come back. I am a glutton, uh, but I mean again, my cost is significantly lower. Right. But I actually started to add just a little bit as it was running up the right side. I'm holding, and I mean it's still. ServiceNow appears to be holding up a lot better than these others. It was actually up today while all the other cloud stocks were down. So if this thing clears 285, I will be buying significant amounts of stock. But the big negative is this group. You, you just have to have the group in gear, and it's not there yet. So right. I, I probably have, I have three small positions in cloud stocks, and I, they're starting to wear me out. Yeah. <laughs> but I haven't sold any. Okay. I have not. I mean, I'm just an optimist at heart. Yeah, and, we're, and we will definitely get into you being an optimist a little bit later in the show. Now, there, there are some other things that you're, you're seeing in, in the markets. The European banks have been uh, acting better, which is a little bit strange and unusual, but you don't fight the market. What, 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 are, what are you seeing there? I There's so much overhead supply in them, I would not dabble in them, but it's kind of like we are going to war in 1990, and the news media was so thick and black with negative. Like, literally, there was a report that the federal government ordered 40,000 body bags. I mean, the, the, the news was so thick Nine. with negativity. And it's just like these European banks. Like, when it looks like the world is going to end, Deutsche Bank's balance sheet is a toxic waste dump. They're never coming back. All of a sudden, they start rising from the ashes. I mean, how did the Greek stock market end up running when, again, their whole government's balance sheet is a toxic waste dump? Right. Well, I mean, maybe this QE in Europe is working. I don't. I don't know, but I, I don't argue with the trend. I mean, I'm just. If someone put a gun to my head and said buy or short, I'd long. Right. <laughs> Gotta be. Right. And and so you're you're seeing the rails coming. You're seeing some retail coming. Biotechs too, right? That they're, they're 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 starting. They've been acting. They've been acting. This has been it's been a few years since they've been acting this well. Maybe even longer than a few years. I have a long history with biotechs and my father, and I I intrinsically love them but i hate them in reality because i've been uh, destroyed in them yeah but the breadth of the market getting into biotechs is fantastic i i personally dislike them greatly yeah uh, well that's a lie i love i like insight a lot it has great earnings i mean it's one of the rare biotechs that have earnings look earnings matter and we've had this unusual string of smile direct club and uber and lyft and i could name you know a bunch of uh, cloud stocks yeah no earnings the only area of froth I can see is that these earningless stocks have been allowed to go public and inflate. That is, in a market of total pessimism and hate by everybody, that's the only froth I can see. So 
I, I mean, it's great for breath and everything, but I'm just going to stay away from the. Yeah, I mean, I'll buy anything with earnings. I mean, if Bill was sitting here and you showed him a stock without earnings, he'd be like, well, what are you doing? He goes, here's 20 stocks that have earnings. Why would you monkey with that stuff? And I feel the same way. Yeah, it, it really is amazing. I mean, and and we can we're having the master's program this week, and that's that's why you're in town. You are truly a student in the market because how many master's programs, how many IBD seminars have you, have you come to? I was thinking about that. I think my first one occurred in around 1994. I had to borrow the money from my mom. Wow. Uh, it was, and I'd been to a bunch of free ones, but since that year, some years I'd I'd fly out here to see him three times or wherever the heck he was. And, you know, some years I would go just once, but do, do the math, 27 or 30 years by one to three. I mean, a lot, a lot, a lot. Yeah. And, and you've had success, uh, success over the, the years do, using this system and, and uh, you're still coming back and, and you're still learning. You never stop learning. Right. I, I think that that's a um, it, it's, it's a pretty good lesson for everyone that you, you, you're you just you got to keep you got to stay humble and keep learning. I learn something every time I go and it it helps to reread my note like I have a stack of notes literally it's it's that deep mm -hmm. and some nights I'll just sit and try to read half of them in a night and I'm like god this is such great stuff but you have to remember it because yeah. if you don't relearn or reapply I don't think you need 100 books in the stock market you need three great ones yep. and you need to reread them over and over because if you just practice and you don't study you lose it. You lose, and then you're going to have some bad performance, and then you'll read them again. Right. That's true. <laughs> and, and it's amazing, it's, especially the How to Make Money in Stock book by, by that Bill wrote a number of years ago. I've found over the years, as, as I've gone through cycle after cycle, those words change. There, uh, There's new meanings that come out of the book because my mind now is ready to pull those new meanings. And I, and I don't even realize, like, well, I didn't even realize he was talking about this. You know, it took me years to understand the gems that he had in that book. I think, listen, Bill's book is the Bible, and but I think the book that is kind of like a, a, a wine that's aged, it's like a California cab that's aged for 20 years, is Reminiscences. Yes. Because yes. he speaks about the art, the finer points, and if you don't have experience, you're going to read Reminiscences, and you're going to be like, oh, I don't have, I don't understand. Bill's book, you're going to understand most of that, but in Reminiscences, until you've read it five, six times, that's it kind of starts to I'm like oh my I understand exactly what he's talking yeah, about yeah especially the turkey story where old where man turkey it's a bull mark it's a bull market you know that is it, I love that story <laughs> <laughs> I mean let, let's briefly touch on it then we'll, then we'll take a break uh, I mean the brilliance of old man turkey is he's not trying to ca capture every wiggle so, so someone else a younger person comes and says, hey you know you made some money here why don't you sell and it's going to pull back and buy it back and old man turkey's saying i'm going to hold for the primary trend and i'm just going to keep holding until that trend breaks. i paid a dear price for that stock the trend is up and no matter what you say that's an opinion but the trend is up yeah and one of my friends who i flew out here with cubby bears yes gave me a ton of golf balls that are stamped turkey on them because he's like, no one sits like you. And that's what he put on my golf balls. <laughs> that's beautiful. So the indices continue to hold near new highs and stocks are hanging in there. And more and more stocks are trying to participate in this rally. Let's take a quick break. But when we return, we are going to talk about the importance of being an optimist. Stay tuned. Hi, everybody. Arusha here. IBD is hosting a free investing webinar on Thursday, December 19th, and you don't want to miss it. It's called Trading Strategies for the Opening Bell, and it's hosted by David Saito Chung and Ed Carson, two veteran members of the IBD Markets team. They're going to show you how to gain an edge on the market by planning optimal trades ahead of the opening bell and then executing your plans using time-tested rules. This webinar is free to watch, so sign up today. Go to Investors.com slash webinar to save your spot. Jim Ropel is our guest on Investing with IBD. Okay, Jim, let's go over the importance of being an optimist because it, it's critical to doing well, really well in life, but uh, well in the, especially well in the stock market. Well, there's no question. I mean, optimists prevail They, in almost everything. I mean, I think Bill once said, I've never met a successful pessimist. Yes. And 
I mean, you see all these people who've blown out in the market and they're just negative. They're short sellers. Um, but I think understanding the big picture and the possibility of things um, that Tesla maybe could become the biggest auto manufacturer in the world. And you've got Jim Klinos or whatever his name is. He's the biggest bear. He's like, someone says, well, what do you think the value is? He's like, zero. <laughs> well, actually, the stock's in an uptrend now. They beat earnings like significantly. They might have straightened out their manufacturing issues. And if you can't identify the possibilities, like how big is the total addressable market, like with Teladoc, yep. think about the possibilities. Well, we have a shortage of healthcare providers and it's a 50% cheaper solution than going to the doctor. Yeah, and it's a much more convenient solution for the patient, Yeah, right? Well, how, how big could that be? Well, if you're a pessimist, like that Forbes article that was written last December that drove the stock down like 60%. Okay. But if the stock gets into an uptrend, you've got to go, well, the population of America is 360 million of documented citizens anyway. Yeah. Well, what percentage could they capture? Now, a pessimist is going to go, well, it's never going to happen. You've got to see the big picture. Um, I have a really, really good friend who's a dentist who's really a trader, and I, I, he had a, I gave him a trading book, and I inscribed it to a man who has the greatest vision because he can see a stock, and he goes, yeah, it's um, when CME was one of them, and okay. CMEs call it at 200, and he goes, you know, he goes, I think it could run to 400 in a couple weeks, and I'm like, you've lost your marbles. Yeah. Guess what it did? Whew. You've got to have... Pessimists never say things like that. Yeah, you you just have to have the ability to understand what the possible big picture is, and what if it all goes right? What could that stock do? And uh, this carries over way beyond the stock market. I mean, uh, the biggest houses you see, very few pessimists living in them. It's true. So you, yeah. I mean, I, that's my view on that. Yeah, and, and it, it is a mindset in, in in many ways. It's a mindset that you probably can train yourself. Uh, over time to, to start looking more, becoming more optimistic and thinking about the possibilities instead of what bad things could happen. Because I, I know when I was younger, I'd always think about the downsides, right? And and it, it took me a while and just reading different books and things like that. And slowly, I guess my, my mind started to change and, and look at the, the bright side. I think it's a virtuous cycle. Yeah. You think positively, you have some success, and now you have a reason to believe in it, and it starts to work. Now, you can not disregard the dangers. You have to sell when the stock violates the guardrail. You have to. You have to be prepared for the next bear market. Now, you mentioned we had this two major bears. Yeah. We had two once in a generation bears right. in ten years. Yes. You have to be prepared that we might have another. But you, so cutting your losses is job one. But once you take care of the possible dangers, you have to look on the... Le in so many of my notes, it says, when in an uptrend, lean bullish. When you're running into an earnings report, and assuming you really intimately understand the fundamentals, you ha you should sit. You, I think they're going to beat by twice what the market thinks. You, if you're sitting there, they're going to miss, they're going to miss. That stock is going to flinch, go down on low volume, mm -hmm. and you're going to puke it up. Yeah, And it's just... We're still talking about pessim optimism. So. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to get take this too far to tangent. No, no, no. And, and and so now now one thing and and this is one one thing that I've learned from you is you know when you're going a lot of times for that home run swing or when you get get that stock that great game potential game changing company, you're gonna ride through it. Kind of like what you've done with service. Now you're gonna get you're gonna hold that position a little bit or hold some of that position. And, and and see if that primary trend truly ends. I think you, that's how you get a 300% gain or a 200% gainer. Um, but I also learned a very valuable lesson. Um, one time I was at markets or uh, the, the, I was at an O'Neill class and I was in the front row and a guy who knows me really well leans forward and goes, hey, he goes, how are you doing this year? And I go, I'm up 230%. Five, five he goes, are you insane? He goes, why don't you sell? <laughs> and I looked around and I go, ego? I don't know. That topped the market and I ended up going from up 230% to up 150% in just a very brief number of days. Wow. So the lesson I learned was when you have a monster, whether it's the whole account or whatever, if you make life-changing money 
I don't care how high you think it can go. You got you have to realize it. Yeah. Because if you you got to fit way. What's the loss? How much am I going to hurt if I lose this dollars? Whether or if it triples, what's going to be more painful? So when you have a life changing gain, you have got to realize it. And I've seen me personally. I did. I've done this a few times, and I've seen a lot of other people do it. So that's the lesson in there. Yeah. No. I, I, it's it's a very very good lesson, and and you know, hopefully you know, uh, listeners out there are going to be in that situation, but they'll probably do you know do the same thing. That, that you've done many others because I've heard that story plenty of times and I, I've felt it too where you start feeling like I got this right and 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 oh my god you know I can do no wrong at that point you start you have to catch yourself like, let me just take something you're off. scaring me right <laughs> if you say I've got this I you, it's a lock yes you were about you're to be done. bludgeoned yes you're done the market will not let you get away with right that. I know I know it's like I'm get, I'm actually getting good at this you know when it's like that part that that's the, it's kind of like golf <laughs> and and I know you 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 love golf but I I know those few times where I had like a really good shot I'm like hey I think I get pretty good at this and then fine and of course I'm hitting the next one into the, the lake and 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 all that and that's that's ego that who who knows what it is it's not being humble and 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 respecting the power i guess the intoxication of making giant money or just whether relative to you whatever yep. big money is yep. is so intoxicating and it it, it, it it's kind of like the rock star walks out on stage it's like that unbelievable rush yeah um it's way beyond the value of the money like whether you could buy cars or whatever it's it's i was right i did all this research everything lined up I staked my claim. I put the money down. I executed properly. The the fulfillment is it's it's intoxicating. Yeah, very intoxicating. And it, and then it leads you to do dumb things. <laughs> it's true. It's very very true. Okay, so when I say I got this, a lot of times for human emotions, that you're starting to get overconfident, right? And you're starting to become complacent. And you're not sticking to your rules. That's not necessarily the same thing as, as being optimistic and and think and knowing that uh, or having a, a mindset that things could get better when when the conditions are there. I think there's a fine line between the two because you your risk tolerance certainly goes up when your account it just balloons. Yep. And remaining cognizant of historical parameters and what is being optimistic. Knowing stocks can go up two and three hundred percent, but knowing they retrace, yes. and always, always be aware of the fact that you think it's going to go up to be the next Cisco, but it just rolls over, and you. So be an optimist, but also be prepared to cut those losses and be wrong. What if the whole thing rolls over? Right. So it's it's a very fine line between being drunkenly gambling ego. And being optimistic, and I think this stock could change the world. Yeah, and, and it's it's really being an optimist, but also learn to listen to the market too. Yes, because in the end, it doesn't matter how optimistic you are, the market is always going to be right. Hundred percent. Now let, let's talk about focus uh, and singular focus, uh, because to get really good at anything, and especially to get good at this in the in, in the stock market, or at least our kind of strategy, you really have to be focused and sacrifice a number of things and, and dedicate your life in many ways to this. What, what are your thoughts on that? Well, it, it, 100% correct. You are right. But it's not just focus for two or three years. Mm -hmm. It's focus for decades. Okay. If you want to yeah. get seriously wealthy, you need to do this and stay disciplined for for 30 years in my case. And I, I see no end to it. Like if you get sloppy, the market is going to cr is going to wallop you. Right. So it is focus, it's dedication, it's consistency every Sunday going through the charts for the deep dive. Every night, look at three, four hundred charts, every index. C keep an eye on all the variables. Like is up to down volume still good? Persistently being focused. It's not just for, this is not get rich quick. This yeah. is, you can get seriously rich, but it takes a lot of time. And anybody can do it. I mean, anybody yeah and and it's not just you know the more time you give it your it allows your money to compound your knowledge starts to compound your experience starts to compound it's a growth you just get better if you stay focused and you realize your your mistakes yeah. and you you're self-actualized enough where you can say i screwed up and then write a, write it down and it, put it on the wall maybe you know always sell it breaking the 50 day or whatever you're f realizing your weaknesses yeah makes you better i mean 
so many people when they get into this initially are like, this is get rich. I want to buy a house or a car or whatever. And it's not get rich quick. It's time. And it's not for the lazy. It's really hard work. And again, it's not a shock why people don't make money in the right. stock market. It's true, true. And even after you've been doing it for 30 years, you still can have your down years. You, you still can, you're still still going to struggle, right? Because the markets aren't always the same and the strategy is not always going to work perfectly. And that's where being an optimist is so important, too, because you have to pick yourself up off the ground. And that's always the hardest part when you, when you have one of those bad years or go through a really bad streak. Absolutely. You're you're going to the the method's going to go out of style. You're going to have bears. You're going to make mistakes, and I don't mean just the rookie. I mean seasoned 20, 30, 40 year vets are going to make mistakes, ten, get ego, ten minutes, uh, and just make s simple. Honestly, the better you, the bigger string of success you have, mm -hmm. the more likely you are to make mistakes. It's it's part of the process. Yeah. No one is. Stan Druckenmiller's record of no losses in some X number of years is like being hit by a misguided space shuttle 30 times in a row. It's, it's not realistic. Right. I mean, I'm, I'm elated for him. Right. But <laughs> mortals like us, not going to happen. Right. And, and I think another lesson to, to, to take is you don't have to watch the markets all the time, too. And that's something that people feel, especially in the beginning, you know, people, they want to get rich quick. And then they're going to, I'm going to spend 10, 20, uh, 10 hours and I'm going to watch the mark every little tick and things like that. And then they burn themselves out. I think, number one, you have to watch the open. Mm -hmm. You have to run a screen 30 minutes in to see the price and vo uh, the, the volume leaders. After that, and you realize you're not in trouble or you don't need to add or anything, you're way better off to go play golf, look every three hole, every two holes, read the ticker monkey who's the click monkey, Yeah, they are going to get lured in to, I mean, at, at some days, Fidelity are, is going to dump 200,000 shares of the stock you own in a day, and it's going to go down three bucks, and it, and it's going to close great, and you're going to get whipped out. Watching every tick is, it's not good. It's It hurts you. You're much better off to take, once you see the open and you see the close, you need to see the first hour and the last 40 minutes and I mean, look, if it's a disastrous day and you might need to be cutting things, right. the best time in the world is after you've had a follow through day, you get long and you're in the right things and you then you just let it go and stop watching. Um, it's like earrings on this really beautiful girl. You, you got to follow it. <laughs> it's it's kind of like this, the lure, the fishing lure. Yeah. You cannot follow those things. You, it's like, look, a squirrel. <laughs> you, you, this stock's jiggling. Yeah. Um, and I, I want to say one thing. This is really important. More money has been not made by trying to reduce volatility because it, it starts to break and you're like, oh, my P&L, whatever. And you sell the gem because it did something funky in her day. Yeah. And then it turns around and it goes up 200%. Stop watching and during the day. It's, these aren't, the stock market is not a slot machine, okay? I think the advent of click and buy versus Call your broker, put the order in. It's a it's a rigmarole. Now it's like click click, and I just bought three hundred thousand shares of stock. Yeah, the and that the brokers are there to make money. They're like the casino, literally. Yeah, this is not a slot machine. The wiggles don't matter. Just stay with the trend and the leaders, and you're gonna you can make some serious money. That's excellent. So remember, the big winners are always the optimists, and never remember uh, always remember to be a student at the market and you can always learn something more coming up next jim and i will talk about three stock ideas we'll be back hey arusha here with a big announcement we have launched a brand new interactive video broadcast called ibd live ibd live takes you behind the curtain to see how professionals trade Log on and watch live as IBD's analysts and portfolio managers follow the first hour of market action and pick winning stocks. You get to listen to our conversations, see our screens, and ask us questions all in real time. If you've ever wanted to trade alongside a team of experts, this is your chance. Go to Investors.com slash IBD live and sign up to get your first two weeks for free. We are back with Jim Ropel on investing with IBD. Okay, Jim, let's go over some current stock ideas that are on your radar. 
Uh, the first one is Coupa Software, ticker symbol C-O-U-P. And uh, nice uptrend. They're forming a base. What do you like about these guys? Well, it, it, the question might be, what's not to like about them? Oh. I mean, if you just look at the numbers, if you took a template of a TML, True Market Leader, and yes. laid it over this, all the bubbles would be filled in. It has last quarter they beat by 233% on estimates. Revenue growth is 54%. Institutions are in it pretty significantly, and I mean good institutions. Relative strength, 96 SD rating, supply demand, for a company that has a market cap this big, it's very high. SD supply demand, it's a measure of the trading volume in relation to the shares outstanding. Once you get up into the 80s and 90s, you can really get a stock. That can really lift off. Um, up to down volumes, 1.5. It just, it has everything. Earnings estimates, 100% this year, 31 next year, they beat. It just, it has most, now, the one negative, and there's this one, mm -hmm. is that the group is really struggling. Um, yeah, they're currently ranked 68, and, and, and yeah, and the numbers, but they're, they're starting to build those right-hand side bases. It, it is. It, 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 this possibly could be uh, an unusual pattern called a diamond pattern. Okay. Um, and the, the volume pattern is not exquisite by any stretch at this minute. It's re- it's digesting. And the, one other thing is it's already had a big run. So this hopefully would be a brand new base and start all over. But when you say to a company, the fundamentals are, we're going to look at your budget and we're going to save you money. I mean, that's an oversimplification, but yeah. customers who sign up with these, this, with Coupa are saving money immediately. So the fundamentals, let me save you some money. How's right. that sound? Yeah, no, it's, they, they put everything just on a nice dashboard and you can very clearly see all your expenses right there, and, and it just enables you to to cut costs and, and become more efficient, and that's what every company is looking for. Yeah. I, I have to say, we've been in a great run, and this stock has not come out yet, and so some of the, the true market leaders are already out, something yes. like a Dexcom right. or a Corvo, QRVO. So the, the stocks that aren't already extended – there's they're saying something, and this one just might need to ferment or age, like right? A good or wine. Maybe, yeah, exactly. Or there, it, it may be the next rotation, yeah. Right, where where it just seems like every quarter it goes into a, a new group or a new sector, mm -hmm. and and maybe that's what the, these guys are setting up for. I hope so. Well, first of all, I'm excited about it, and um, I like the base, and I like the fact that it is nine percent off the high when most of these cloud stocks are still significant. Yes. So in that space, Coupa and Now appear to be the leaders or potential new leaders yeah the relative strength line is strong rel rel rs ratings in 96 still uh and i mean those numbers triple digit earnings so those always kind of stick out those are the ones but uh, don't get me wrong you should not be in this stock now you right. should not be anticipating so let's go to the second stock the second stock is dexcom d x c m and these guys broke out uh, on a strong earnings report, they had an earnings gap, and it has been running for a while. It started to come in a little bit over the last week or so, so it, it was due for a little bit rest. But what, what do you like about these guys? Well, what percentage of the population in the U.S. is obese? And what percentage has diabetes or is going to have it? Yeah. And what percentage do they have market share right now? It's minuscule. And they have a better mousetrap than the other competitors. They... The earnings gap wasn't just an earnings gap. It was an earnings gap on 7.2 million shares, which was the heaviest volume it's ever traded, I think, at least in a long time. Um, the estimates were 283% growth this year. Institutions, Fidelity is, is in this significantly. Last earnings beat was a 225% beat on a 49% sales growth. Estimates are huge. Relative strength is great. It's in a good sector. It's not elite sector, but still very good. Um, you know, one of the greatest edges you can ever get is finding out that Fidelity just bought, say, a tiny little position in uh -huh. one fund. Yeah. Because what happens is the biotech analyst goes to, or whatever sector analyst goes to all the offices, all the PMs, and they say, well, what's your best idea? And he goes, oh, it's Dexcom. So if you can find that one of these guys bought it, you can pretty much rest assured that over the next six months, they're all going to buy That's it. That's interesting. It's it, it's re, it's it's like it's really a gem. To find out Fidelity already has twenty percent of all the shares is a problem. Right. 
but to find out they just took if one fund it yeah. fell, it took a tiny little position. Rest assured, the rest of the elephants are coming your way, and they have that. Um, and then also, when Fidelity's in there, it's a super quality stock. This is another template. Now, now this one is better than Siebel. I'm sorry. Koopa looks so much to me like Siebel from a million years ago. I can't, it's in yeah. my head. <laughs> yes, it's. But um, Dexcom is better because it's already out. It's telling you, hey, look at me. The question is, if you missed the gap or you chickened out, now how do you work your way in? Yep. And that is is a real conundrum. Yeah, yeah, you may have to wait for another basis set up or maybe a three weeks tight. You have to repl- uh, remain disciplined, though. And be ready for, look, there's only a couple times a year when you should be taking initial positions. You should not be taking full positions on a three weeks tight unless you have an elite, elite, rare situation. Six, six minutes. And this goes to overtrading. You really should be in cash when the market's bad. And when it goes, when it turns up, you need to go long and go long big. But once it's gone, starting whole new positions on a three weeks tight or some tiny little digestion, your risk is very, very high, yep. and your odds go down. You ha- so that f- really reinforces the follow through day and getting on it right now, even when it looks like the government just ordered forty thousand body bags, and two days later the market follows through. Yeah, you so tangent. It, it, no, it, it's a, it's a good uh, it's a good lesson because every time after. After you have a serious correction, it's hard to get into a fall through day, right? Because it's amazing how quickly your mind can just shift. Where if you see it starts, at least for me, you start. I see start see uh, start seeing stocks come down at for a few weeks. Even though I'm out of the market, you just start to think that wow, the stocks are never going to go up. It's just almost human nature, and that's why you have those rules because it's so hard to. Uh, you know, let your psychology snap you out of it and get in at the right time. The better the opportunity, the darker the time frame will be. The, it, there'll be something horrible, like something catastrophic, like the uh, savings and loans. All of the savings and loans in the whole United States are going to go to zero. The banking system is going to implode. And then all of a sudden, you have these thundering follow-through days. Yeah. So you you cannot go, well, the, the SNLs are still blowing up. You have to say that somebody way smarter and way bigger than me is now changed direction and this, the tide is is coming in. I have to get in gear. You, you just can't, cannot, you can't fight that. That's perfect. Now, uh, let's talk about dominant, the dominant fundamental factor. Mm-hmm. Uh, because you, you when, when we were speaking yesterday about this, you, you, you used Dexcom as, as, uh, as an example of this. Every stock... If you owned Dexcom six months ago, a year ago, the fundamentals were just as good then as they are today, but the market didn't care. So you're wasting your time. Until the market cares, then it's the only time you want to be involved. And the the dominant fundamental factor is not just with individual names, it's with the general market. Mm -hmm. In other words, having, hypothetically, if you had access to inside information about the product, it doesn't matter if no one else knows. The, the, first of all, the odds of you having that is extremely remote. Right. But if you did, <laughs> if the market hasn't figured it out yet, who cares? If the institutions aren't pushing it up, it doesn't matter. And on the converse, it, let's just say there's a stock and it's rocking and you, you find out really negative news. Well, even if it was a full-blown fraud, well, Fidelity is going to figure it's a fraud too before you, and they're going to start to sell. Yeah. But before they figure it out, they might push that stock a couple hundred percent. So forget what you think you know what the fundamental factor is. Wait until the market believes it. Whether it's right or wrong, whether the general trend of the market or the stock, you've got the fun, dominant fundamental factor has got to be recognized by the market, and the market's got to be acting on it. Having information that's gold, that the market's not acting on is crap. Yeah, it's <laughs> well said. What it really is is probably not true. Yeah, exactly. So let's go to the third stock, DocuSign. Now, this was a stock that you liked uh, the last time you were on the show, and and so it's since then it's been moving up. And and the last time we spoke, and you know, the market wasn't a correction. We were waiting for that fall today, but DocuSign was kind of sticking out, right? Where it was resisting the downtrend. Uh, better than most stocks. Honestly, I'm I'm a little surprised. I would have thought that this would be higher uh, w- with the way the market act has acted the last six weeks or so. Again, this goes to the group. Yeah. The group is is um, it's not quite. It's not anywhere near elite. 
and this stock's been difficult. I've, uh, I did buy it, and I was, I bought a bunch, and I got stopped out of a little bit, and then I added. It's been very hard to build a big position with this, and so now I finally have it, it on this big gap out we had. But again, if you look at this thing on a monthly chart, it just looks beautiful, yes. and the the volume signature. Now this really smacks of institutional accumulation, uh, and let's talk about why. Earnings up 118 uh, percent. This year estimates, next year 71. The last beat, again, 266 percent beat on a thousand percent is kind of. Um, it they were up against one penny. Okay. But you know what it reminds me of? Amgen. Amgen, in their wow. first report, they reported 32 cents against a penny. Wow. Well, that was the beginning of one of the greatest runs I'd ever seen. I was just, I was a rookie broker, cold call king back then, but the sales 40%, uh, up to down volume 1.3. I'm going to just check the SD rating. Um, I can't get it right now. But again, institutions are in it. It, it really has a – if it wasn't – for this sector, I think the stock could be a lot higher. And let's talk about the fundamentals yeah. because it's imperative to understand Bill was primarily a fundamentalist. And so I think about the last three, four legal documents I signed, maybe mm. the last six. Eleven. All digital signatures with their product. So, I mean, I can see it in my own life. And how easy was that? Oh, it's crazy simple. Yeah. And so it not only makes it easy for everyone, it makes it so much more efficient. You know, everyone gets to sign it. You, people, especially in, the, in an office place like in IBD, if you, have, if you have, a, have a number of people sign it, sometimes it, it gets on one person's desk and they they don't sign it for a, a week or so, right? Well, uh, because well, imagine having to FedEx a package from here to London to Singapore and back. Yeah. Or, I mean, you know, how about... We can rest it. This is an amazing product. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's uh, DocuSign. It, it's extended now, so you have to like like uh, Dexcom. Uh, you have to wait for something to set up more substantial before you can really build a big position in it. And it's been tough. This has been a really tough stock to sit with. Okay, so th those are three ideas to consider, and you definitely want to take a look at them and add them to your watch list if you like them. Thanks, Jim, for joining us today. It was wonderful being here. That's it for this week on Investing with IBD. Next week, we are going to have Ed Carson on the show. He is an editor at IBD. Uh, and Ed and I did a webinar last year on earnings, and he is also an expert on Star Wars. There's a new Star Wars movie coming up, and we are going to have Ed give his thoughts on Star Wars and how Star Wars is very similar to the way we invest in the markets. So that's it. I'm Arusha Paris, and thanks for listening. <laughs>